Lady from New York Reserves, gentleman from Georgia. Mr. Speaker, at this time I'm pleased to yield uh, three minutes uh, to a gentleman who has great reverence for the United States Constitution, the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Paul. The gentleman is recognized for three minutes. I uh, thank the gentleman uh, for yielding. I rise in support of this rule, although I have a lot of complaints about how we deal with the issue of war. This is a debate that should have gone on four months ago before the war was started, and if we'd have done this properly, uh, we wouldn't be bringing this up quickly. Uh, no committee work, no discussion, no chance for amendment. But nevertheless, I will support the rule because at least we get a chance to talk a little bit about what's going on in, in Libya. We have two resolutions that will come up under this rule. The first resolution, generally I understand most individuals aren't too keen on this because it's a literal endorsement. It's a rather explicit endorsement of the war, and I obviously would be opposed to H.J. Res 68. But my greatest concern is about H.R. 2278, because the way I read this uh, resolution is that it essentially grants the same authority that we grant in the first one, because we say that oh, no, no funds can be used, deny the use of funds, but how can you deny the use of appropriated funds when they're using funds that weren't appropriated? It's so redundant. The funds were never appropriated, so yes, it's a good statement. No funds, you don't continue to be illegal, is what we're saying. But what I'm concerned about are the exceptions. All the exceptions are for the things that they're doing. You know, like search and rescue, intelligence gathering, renaissance, uh, surveillance, refueling, uh, uh, operations planning, and uh, doing everything except pulling the trigger. So we're legalizing that. I believe that H.R. 2278 is the first time that we in the Congress are making a statement that we are granting authority to the President to pursue this particular war. So I am in strong opposition to that resolution as well, although I understand the other side of the argument because it says denial of funds. But, you know, the, the resolution actually says that, uh, you know, the main reason, the author of the resolution said, the reason why we have the exception is to protect the integrity of our contract or agreement with NATO. Well, in the resolution, the, new, the resolution said we have to stop the funding because we don't want to support NATO's war. So it's totally inconsistent, it makes no sense whatsoever, but it reminds me of the War Powers Resolution. You know, after, after the Vietnam War, we didn't want to get into that, that kind of war anymore. So they come along to Congress, and it is an infinite wisdom, is with great good intentions, designs the War Powers Resolution, which legalized war for 90 days. That's part of the reason why we're here. We're worrying about a 90 days, but here we're going into the fourth month dealing with the War Powers Resolution. There's a simple solution to all of this. And that is, obey the Constitution, don't allow our presidents to go to war without a declaration of war, and we wouldn't be facing this problem of this debate that actually gets a little bit silly uh, on, on restraining the president. Yes, we should. We should exert ourselves. We have the prerogatives. We have the obligations. Gentleman's time has expired. And we have avoided it. It's time to stand up for the rule of law. Gentleman's time has expired. Gentleman from New York.